On behalf of the Santa Fe Museum of Ancient Art, I'd like to thank you for your visit. We hope our collection of cross-cultural art has truly been an enriching experience. However, the time is now 4.55. Please begin making your way to the front exit. The museum doors will be locking in five minutes. Okay, people, please move to the front. Thank you for coming today. We hope you've enjoyed your visit. Let's keep moving. Robert Wilson. Benjamin Park. Well, it's been a long time. Jonathan. Yeah? I want to introduce you to my grandson. He and his family live with me. Jonathan, this is Dr. Robert Wilson, the museum curator. Hello, Dr. Wilson. And uh, these are Jonathan's friends, uh, Jessica. Hello. Dad, his little brother Timmy, Hi. and Mike, Hi. and here's Eddie. Hello. We're the Eagle's Nest Gang. Well, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. The uh, boys are working on a report about Indian folk culture. I couldn't think of a better place to bring them. Now I'll get my report done before school's out. Robert, a few years back, you were working on an early ancient civilizations project and... <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm still working on it. And there have been some pretty exciting developments lately. Really? Yes. Maybe you've heard the announcement made in May 2000 about the ancient city of Tel Hamukar in Syria. Refresh my memory. Well, this lost civilization looks like it had a complex form of government and an advanced society. Before now... It was thought that such sophistication didn't evolve until much later. When I first heard about it, I was tremendously excited. This means that man was much more complex earlier than previously thought. That sure fits what the Bible says. You know, where God created man smart from the start? Yeah, well, if you believe in that kind of thing. Uh, kids, Dr. Wilson doesn't share our same views about creation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Dr. Wilson. <laughs> no, not at all. After all, I've been taking it from your grandpa for years. Robert, you said you have information about this new Tel Hamukar site. It's in my office. Boy, I'd sure like to have a copy of that for my son, Kendall. Why don't you come on back with me? I'll make a copy. Are you sure? I know the museum is closed. No problem. Hey, have you kids seen the jaguar mask yet? Jaguar mask? Cool! The mask is one of our most valuable pieces. Why don't you guys check it out? It's just through this door. Benjamin and I will meet you there in five minutes. Yeah! Awesome. Hey, there it is! Whoa! Its eyes are staring right at me! I don't like it. Stop it, Eddie. You're scaring Timmy. Scaring Timmy? I'm scaring myself. I've got to go to the bathroom. Mike, come with me. Are you serious? Yeah, let's hurry. Well, thanks again for the copies. No problem. Oh, you've got a nice view from up here. A second-story view of a muddy field. Hey! Did you see that? What? It was a person wearing black. I assure you, I was looking out the window and I didn't see anything. But you must have. Well, we better get back to the kids and lock up. Let's hurry. I was sure I saw something. Here's the bathroom. Eddie, read the sign. That's the electrical closet. <laughs> Oops. This is the bathroom. Ladies first. Why, thank you, kind sir. Come on, hurry. The others are going to wonder. Whoa! Somebody tracked mud in here. Look, the bathroom window's open. The lights! Did you hear that? Someone flipped the switch from the electrical closet just on the other side of this wall. I think someone's broken in here. We've got to go warn the others. An intruder has broken into the museum. What do they want? Is the Eagle's Nest gang in danger? To find out, join us in Jonathan Park and the adventure on the Oscilla River. Hello. You've reached the park residence. Please leave a message at the sound of the beep. Hey, Angela, this is your sister, Erica. A man just called for you. I don't know how he got our number in lacrosse. He kept asking questions about you. Well, I wasn't about to give him your number, like I'd give it to a stranger over the phone. Sis, I just wanted to warn you that there's someone out there who's trying to find you. I'll be praying. Hey, what's up with the lights? Dr. Wilson said he was going to lock up. Maybe he just turned them off. The red glow from the exit sign sure looks eerie in here. Hey, you guys want to play a funny trick on Mike and Eddie? Sure. Let's hide behind these plants. I just saw one of those statues move. How could no, this... No, Thad. Timmy's right. There's someone moving behind the statues. He's wearing a ski mask. I think we're witnessing a robbery. Guys, where are you? There's somebody that... That's standing right there looking at me. Whoops. Run! Dad, pull the fire alarm! He's got the jaguar! You did it! You got it! 
got the map! Yes, the Jaguar is ours. Now step on it, some brats are after me! And now for an update on last night's robbery at the Santa Fe Museum of Ancient Art. Police are still baffled by the heist with absolutely no leads to the whereabouts of the Jaguar mask. The group of kids who saw the robbery, the Eagle's Nest, are safe at home again with their families. Thanks for having us over, Martha. Well, I thought it'd be fun to get our two families together. Uh, it's sure nice to relax after that big ordeal with the museum last night. Dad, the Lord sure was protecting us. Maybe he had a reason for us to be there. Hey, speaking of God's purpose, Jonathan, I need to ask you a question. Yes, Mr. Brennan? You know our neighbors, the Trents. Well, they have a son named Billy. And about four years ago, he fell into the river and almost drowned. It was horrible. It sure was. Well, although he lived, he's now in a wheelchair. Unfortunately, the little guy suffered some brain damage that affects his motor skills. But he's incredibly intelligent. It's hard to see a seven-year-old boy like that. Jonathan, the Trents asked me if I knew anybody that would be a big brother to Billy. And I thought since you'll be on winter break soon, you might be interested in helping him out. I... I don't think so. Billy's a lot of fun to be with. Jonathan, you can make up your own mind, but I want you to pray that you'll do what the Lord wants. Well, if you change your mind, just let me know. I will. Well, kids, there's hot chocolate in the kitchen. What? I wonder who it is. Can you get it, please? Sure, Mom. Hello? Package for the Brennans. That's us. Sign here, please. I wonder what it could be. Thanks. Thank you. Mom, it's our tickets to Florida. Oh, they're finally here. I wish we were going. Me too. I'm tired of all the snow. Katie! The weather will be great, mid-70s. For years, my brother David has been asking us to come out and visit him in Mariana. When Jim found out about the Florida caverns, he thought it would be a great opportunity to learn how to open our caves to the public. I know where Mariana is. It's close to Tallahassee. Oh, that's right. You went to college there, didn't you? I sure did. I majored in underwater archaeology. Underwater archaeology? That's so cool, Mom. Hey, may I use your phone? Sure. I got this really strange call from my sister today. I want to check our messages and see if there's anything new. Hey, Mr. Park, this is Robbie from the Mile of Cars. We've got a... You've been placed in our drawing for a chance. Angela Park, this is Franklin Harvey Ash. You're a hard person to find. I've been trying to track you down, but I'm beginning to think I'll need to get you in person. I'm coming for you because... Oh, no. Not now. Come on. I'm coming for you because you're the only one that I can... Kendall, come in here. Franklin Harvey Ash... Do I know that name? Angela, honey, what's wrong? Somebody by the name of Franklin Harvey Ash is trying to track me down. Mm, there's probably a logical explanation. Angela, everything's going to be all right. Let's go home. Dad? Mom said you wanted to see me? Come on in, son. I guess Mom's still trying to figure out that message. Yes, I wonder what that's all about. Jonathan, I want to talk to you about being a big brother to Billy Trent. Dad. I know that you don't feel like doing this, but have you considered what the Lord wants? No, not really. Hand me my Bible over there, would you? Sure, Dad. I want to read a very special verse to you. 1 John 3.18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Jonathan, I think the Lord wants you to reach out to this little boy who really needs a friend. I know, but I just can't do it. You said I could make up my own mind, right? Yes, yes I did. I just don't want to see you miss out on a wonderful opportunity to see God work through you, that's all. Yes, sir. Now, there's one more thing. How did your Indian report go? Really well. But it made me think about some things. Like? Well, studying these Indians made me wonder where they came from in the first place. What do you mean? Well, why are there all these different kinds of people? How could we all come from Adam and Eve, but all look so different? Well, the Bible has an explanation. It's an event that took place not too long after Noah's flood. The Tower of Babel! That's right. Well, here, let me read it to you. In Genesis chapter 11, it says, And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. 
and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So everyone spoke one language at that time? Yes, but like it says, the people wanted to do wrong, so God decided to ruin their plans. He did something in verse 7. Let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. But how did they start looking so different from each other? Well, think about it. Well, people who spoke the same way stayed together and moved to their own part of the world. But I still don't understand why they began looking so different from each other. Well, Jonathan, think about a box of 20 crayons, okay? Imagine you divide the crayons into new groups of five, then color a picture of a man with each set of five colors. The individual pictures would look different from each other because of the color characteristics in each group of five. On one of your pictures, the man might have yellow hair, while on the other, his hair might be brown. That's how it was with the people at the Tower of Babel. They were divided into smaller groups by the language they spoke. Each of these groups had their own set of characteristics, and they were different from the other groups. So that's what makes people look different? Yes, but it's more than that. People aren't just different colors, but have many other differences. This is because the entire body of genetic information that was present at the Tower of Babel was divided into smaller, isolated groups. Our faces are different shapes, different body styles, and we all have different abilities. But Jonathan, we're all made equal in the Creator's image. And that's why we can never say that one group is better than another. We're all family. Good explanation, Dad. Good explanation? I thought it was excellent. Well, okay. Pretty good. Well, mister, it's time for bed. Tomorrow night we're taking the Brennans to the Albuquerque airport, so you need your sleep. Good night, Dad. Union Airlines, flight number 5221, is now pre-boarding for Tallahassee, Florida. That's right us. Now, I wish you were coming. Oh, me too. Oh, by the way, here's my brother's phone number and address, just in case you need to reach us for some reason. It's David McCary. Listen, Jim, don't spend all your time in the cave. Try to get a little relaxation in, will you? Don't worry, we will. Bye. 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 If you're holding boarding passes, one well, through one. I'm sure I'm going to miss those guys. Me too. I know just the thing to pick you up. There's an ice cream stand right over there, and I'm buying. You're on. Oh, I'll meet you guys over there. I left my purse over on those seats. Dad, can I have a cherry vanilla? All remaining passengers for Union Airlines. Why do I always have to leave this? Hello. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a little jumpy. Angela Park, you're a hard woman to find. But now I've finally found you. Hello, Lucinda Black. Yes, I've got the mask in a safe place. Well, yes, I know it was risky coming into the... I had no idea those miserable kids were in there. That was a dumb move on your part. Besides, the important thing is we've got the mask. And I think I already have a way to unload this thing. I've got to go. Joseph Arnold, please pick up the white courtesy phone. Angela Park, I'm glad I finally found you. Sorry. What do you want with me? Who are you? My name is Franklin Harvey Ash. Uh, And why have you come for Angela? Not here. Sure, there must be an airport restaurant. How about dinner? What do you think? All right, Mr. Ash, we'll hear you out. Fair enough. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Eddie, you guys need to get off the computer pretty soon and go experience reality. Why don't you go for a bike ride or something? Okay, Mom. Game over. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, speaking of bikes, have you seen that new dirt bike? Oh, yeah, the new Jag. With super tracker tires, a chrome molly frame, Geared to climb a mountain and light enough to race. What are you guys talking about? The Jag. New from Ruffy Bikes. Hey, there's one on Weebit. Weebit? You know, the internet auction. All right, let me just type Jag into the search engine and... Bingo! Hey, look at that! It's the Jaguar mask. Just like the one in the museum. I think it is the one from the museum. Guys, dinner's ready. Okay, we'll be right there. What are we going to do, just email the thief? I think we should call the police. We'll figure this out after dinner. Can I take your order, please? I think we could all use a few more minutes. Do you like steak and lobster? Uh, 
I do. We'll take steak and lobster all the way around. I'll take your menus. If you need anything else, just let me know. Thanks for your generosity, Mr. Ash, but there's no need for you to pick up the entire tab. No, no, I insist. Well, looking at the price of the lobster, you'd have to be rich. Katie! It's all right, Mrs. Park. Katie, I do have money, but it's only because of the Lord's goodness. So, Mr. Ash, what brings you here? I live in Tallahassee, Florida. Really? Yes. For years, the college there has done work on an underwater archaeology project studying Paleo-Indian cultures at the Osceola River. I was one of the original students who worked on that Paleo-Indian site. I know, but did you know that the college is abandoning their work there? They're giving it up? Just like that? They're moving to a new site. What's a Paleo-Indian site? Jonathan, scientists have uncovered evidence of past Indian civilizations at the Osceola River. I don't get it. Creation scientists have theorized that there was an ice age that took place for a few hundred years after the flood. It was during this time that God scattered the people from the Tower of Babel. And it's possible some people crossed the land or ice bridge and traveled across America and inhabited the Osceola River Basin in Florida. Well put, Angela. I thought you'd know your stuff. Eddie, your mom's the best cook. No kidding. That was the best lasagna I've ever had. We even get dessert later, huh? So what are we going to do about the jaguar mask? I'm going to email the crook a message. Right now? Okay, guys. Help me out with this. Um, dear... Crook. Eddie, you can't write that. Yeah, you need to make it sound like we're interested in buying the mask. All right, all right. Mm, let's see. Dear honest and upstanding artifact swindler. Eddie. Here, let me try. Okay. Dear. How about dealer? All right. Dear dealer, interested in mask, live in Santa Fe. We'll wait for your instructions. Perfect. Here it goes. So, Mr. Ash, why have you come after Angela? When I heard that the college was pulling out of the Osceola River, I realized there would be no more research. Then it dawned on me that if creationists could take over the work, the world could get first-hand evidence in support of the Bible. Some of the college faculty let me look through past rosters of students that had worked on the site. That's when I came across the name Angela Johnson. Johnson? My maiden name. Soon I learned that you were married to Kendall Park and living in Santa Fe. After trying to contact you without success, I decided to fly out here and find you in person. How'd you know we'd be at the airport? I didn't. I was just flying in from Tallahassee, and I recognized you immediately from your pictures. Angela, I need you to come to Florida. We've only got a short time. I need you to search for artifacts that can be used to document evidence for the biblical account. What an opportunity. But, Mr. Ash, if I were younger, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But I have a family to take care of. Bring your family. You'd only be gone for a week. Mr. Ash, I appreciate the offer more than you'll ever know, but I just have to say no. Oh, Mom. Angela. Well, I can't say that I'm not disappointed. Uh, Tomorrow, I'm supposed to meet with the director of the Santa Fe Museum of Ancient Art. I'm going to give you my hotel number. Call me if you change your mind. So, Mr. Ash, you're interested in selling artifacts. I hope to have a small team working on the Osceola River in Florida. We want to support the project. Here's my card. When you're ready to sell, give me a call. Oh, absolutely. So you're headed back to Florida? Yes, I'm flying out on Union Air tomorrow at 10 a.m. I hope you have a nice flight. Well, thank you, Dr. Wilson. No, thank you. Hello? I have another job for you. So soon? How would you like to enjoy the warm weather in Florida? Hmm, sounds delightful. I'll be right over. This one's going to be a piece of cake. (laughs) Honey, I'm home. (laughs) How was the ranch? That's a little lonely without the Brennans there. Hi, Dad. Hey, Dad, what have you got? That's a letter for Jonathan. So, how was your last day of school before winter break? It was okay. I'm just glad we're done. Uh, How about you, Angela? Any decisions yet? No. I've been praying the whole day... We'd have to fly out tomorrow. Oh, no. What's wrong? This is a letter from Mrs. Trent. Really? Yeah. She says that she understands if I don't want to be Billy's big brother. But then she invited me to come over for lunch and at least meet him. Well, are you going to go? I don't know. I'm feeling a little pressured. Well, I hate to break up the party, but I'm going into the den to get a little work done before dinner. If it's okay, Mom, I'm going to head down to Danielle's house. Sure, just be back by dinner. I will. Well, I guess it's just you and me, kid. Mom, it sure would be great to go to Florida. I know. I'm just not sure. How come? Well, Jonathan, I guess when it gets right down to it, I'm a little nervous about failing. Failing? I mean, 
Mr. Ash would be paying a lot of money to fly us down there to find artifacts. What if I let him down? Aw, oh, Mom, you'd do great. I guess. Well, hey, what about you? Huh? What about your decision? Are you going to meet Billy Trent? I guess I'm scared, too. Well, do you know why? Well, I hadn't thought about it until now, but I guess I've never been around a disabled boy before. We're quite a pair, aren't we? We're both presented with an opportunity for ministry, but we can't get past our fears. Yeah. Jonathan, you know, if we both trust in the Lord, I bet he'll use us in exciting ways. We're not making ourselves available to God. I guess that's true. Well, I've talked myself into it. Huh? I think God's calling me to the Osceola River. We're going to Florida. Awesome. I better let your father know we'll be jumping on a plane tomorrow at 10 a.m. From the flight deck, this is Captain Riley. You'll notice wow, I have this is so exciting. A trip to Florida. Well, it certainly is a surprise. Angela, I'm glad you decided to come. Uh, Mr. Ash, I brought some of my equipment with me, but we're going to need a boat, dredge, tools, and a lot of other stuff to pull this off. I've made arrangements for everything, and I've already rented a hotel for you in Tallahassee. Cool. Before we get started, I wondered if we could make a quick stop in Mariana. We have some friends staying there. Oh, yes, that's fine. So, Mr. Ash, if you don't mind me asking, you're going to a huge expense for this whole project. Why is it worth it to you? Kendall, about seven years ago, I had it all. Money, nice cars, and a wife, Mary Ann, who I loved very much. She and I traveled everywhere together, and yet, somehow, life seemed empty. Now, don't get me wrong. She and I had wonderful times. It was just that deep down inside, I felt a hollowness of some sort. I remember that feeling. Well, it wasn't long after that that we found out that Mary Ann had cancer. She fought for her life for six months. And then one day, as I was holding her tightly, she slipped out of this world. I was devastated. I felt so all alone and without a purpose. Oh, how awful. I'm sorry. Even though I wouldn't have admitted it back then, I had nothing to live for except Marianne. But now that I'm a Christian, I understand things better. Now I realize that if there's no God, we have no purpose in life. In my mind, evolution was our creator. At the time, I didn't make the connection, but if you truly believe that evolutionary chance is what formed the universe, then there is no real purpose in life. I came to that same conclusion. It was at this point that I grappled for the reason for my existence. There were even times when I had contemplated ending my life. and I would have if it weren't for a friend. He was there for me in my darkness. You know, and then he invited me to a creation seminar in Jacksonville. I was hesitant at first. How bet. But my friend, he was persistent. I went along, reluctantly. But by the end of that first session, I was amazed. The speaker was talking about the impossibility of the evolutionary origin of life. He clearly showed that true science points to a creator. I was riveted to his every word. And then at the end of the seminar, the speaker opened the Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, which says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. It was there that I trusted Christ and dedicated my life to serve the Creator. Now that I'm a Christian, I understand Christ's death on the cross for my sins. That's awesome. Yes. Now I realize that if there's a Creator, that He made me with a purpose and a plan. And that feeling of despair was replaced by the fact that there was an ultimate purpose for living, and that's to glorify Him and to let others know of His wonderful grace. What a beautiful testimony. And that, Kendall, is why this is so important. God has given me the resources and passion for this Oscilla River project. You know, I want to find more evidence that will build a Christian's faith and then challenge the unbeliever. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Mr. Ash. Can I take I... your orders for drinks? Oh, sure. I'll have a soda. All right. Root beer, please. Soda. Okay. Do you have water? Yes, sir. I'll have that for you on my next lap. So, do you know how to scuba dive? Drinks? Down, yeah, no, you got any orange juice? Yes, we oh, do. Just water. Uh, I need some help. Yes? I'm just about done with an email that I need to send. Can I use this phone in the seat back? Why, yes. See the modem port right here? If I can be of further service, just let me know, Miss... Black. Lucinda Black. Sir, what kind of drink would you like? We have soda. I'm willing to meet you alone to sell the mask. I'll meet you at 9 p.m. this Thursday at the Old Davy House. I trust you to tell no one. L.B. What is Lucinda Black up to? 
Will the Parks find out they're being tailed? And what about the Oscilla River project? Will Angela Park succeed in finding the important artifacts that Franklin Harvey Ash needs? To find out, you'll need to join us next time in part two of Jonathan Park and the Adventure on the Oscilla River. You've been listening to The Adventures of Jonathan Park. Although the story is fictitious, many of our adventures are based on real places, historical events, or scientific discoveries. To learn more about Jonathan Park and evidence for creation, please visit our website at jonathanpark.com. You'll also find additional resources that will help you see and understand how science is in complete agreement with God's Word. That's jonathanpark.com. Be sure to listen to the next album in the Adventure Begins series, when the Park family dives to the bottom of the Oscilla River to look for artifacts, in part two of Jonathan Park and the Adventure on the Oscilla River. Until next time, this is Dr. Kendall Park reminding you, this is our Father's world. God created it. We can explore it. So live the adventure.